his amazing projects. Thank Today you. we're going to talk about wall art, but you're inspired by a certain era. Yes, mid-century modern era. Nice. And a lot of the art that was created in that time was really inspired with what was happening in space. Okay, a lot of the pieces had things like starbursts, mm -hmm. shiny metal, shiny plastic in organic forms. And that's how I created these three pieces. Lovely. Okay, so the first piece over there, how did you make that? So this one, you know, in a, in a lot of the mid-century modern pieces, they use teak or wood. Right. I didn't want to use teak because it's really expensive. So mm -hmm. I actually paneled a board with cedar shims, which is really inexpensive and easy to get your hands on. Yeah. And then I just painted these organic shapes. It's kind of look like a solar system. Yeah. No, it's very reminiscent. Like, I think all of us had at least one of these examples in our home. Exactly. I know I definitely had this one, but let's talk about the Starburst. The Starburst, really, that's inspired by the Sputnik satellite. Uh, the shiny center and all the antennas around it. And I yes. used some glossy paint to really make it feel bright and really pop off the wall. Very cool. And then finally, this one I just love because it reminds me of our 70s home. Totally. And you know, <laughs> that's exactly what people remember. Yeah. And this is a metal wall hanging piece. And really, the, the pieces are all floating in front of them. They're really pin mounted and really concealed. Right. And it kind of gives you that feeling that things are sort of weightless. Mm -hmm. And so let me okay. show you how I made all these three pieces. Okay, so we'll show you how to make them sort of in fast forward. And yes. then we always put all of the instructions on our website yes. at cityline.ca so you can see how you actually went through the paces. I love your projects. So we'll start with this one. Yes, so this one here, cedar shims. And really, I just took a board and I glued them down all in the same configuration and lineup. Okay. And then I framed it with some white trim. And then I used uh, paint, bright colors, to paint the forms. Now, the one thing about cedar shims is that they're not going to be all the same length. So no. if you need to sort of trim them, they're actually really easy to trim because you can take a pair of oh, scissors and good. cut the ends off. Right. And there you go. And that's the first piece. Do you care which way you're laying them, them down? No, I mean, you could do them one way or the other, but yeah. I really liked the whole vertical line of right. the way it was running on the, on the, the piece behind me. So it kind of gives it more height. Love it. Okay. Now this one, I must admit, this one is my favorite. I'm not supposed to have favorite DIYs, uh -huh. but this one is my favorite. So this one, what you're going to need is you're going to need a clock. Mm -hmm. You're going to need wooden dowels. You're going to need 12 of them and okay. 12 spongy balls. Right. These okay. are the stress balls. Yes. And ah. I got all of these from the dollar store. The okay. clock, the dowels, and the sponge Everything. balls. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut your dowels uh -huh. and you're going to cut them into two different heights or lengths. Yeah. And if you look at the ends, you can see they've actually been cut on an angle and that's going to help make the assembly go a little bit faster. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your little sponge ball and you're going to put a little bit of glue at the end of the pointy part right. and you're actually going to, I'm going to turn it around so you're it don't look like. You're just going to stab the happy totally. man. I'm just going to stab it in there <laughs> oh, and it's going to stay in there. And then what, going to be sad. Exactly. Now you've got this little assembly. Okay. So what I did is I pre-painted everything. So I painted all the balls and all the antennas. Uh -huh. And then what I did is I took my clock and I drilled holes around it at the five minute mark. Okay. So you, can, so you can see, see that see. from the side there. And what you do when you're drilling plastic, you have to start with a small drill bit mm -hmm. and then go to a bigger drill bit because you can really crack it easily. Oh, okay. And then what you do is you're going to take your pieces and you're actually just going to force it in and then I'm going to turn it around and you're going to see that I'm going to just glue it in place. Oh, I see. And, that's what, and I also pre-painted the clock before I assembled everything. And did you paint these as well? Yep, painted the stems uh, white. Very nice. Yeah. I love it. Now this piece... He does this, not love it. No, I know. These guys didn't like it at all. <laughs> that's okay. Um, this, so this is my favorite one. How do you do this? So this one here, you're going to start with a metal grid. And if you can hold that up. Now this sure. is something that you can get at a building supply store. It's actually meant to be put into concrete to reinforce it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it comes in big sheets and you can use pliers. You can ask someone at the building store to cut it down to size for you. All right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get a roll of aluminum flashing. Uh huh. And it's pretty inexpensive and it's easy to work with because you can cut it actually with the same pair of scissors. Try not to cut your fingers though. No, I mean, it's, really sharp? it's not that sharp. Oh, it's not that bad. You could take a piece of uh, sandpaper and sand it down as well. Yeah. Okay. And so what you're going to first do is you're going to make these little strips. Uh -huh. And the strips are going to be in various lengths. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to bend them and you're going to create like a U shape first. Okay. And then you're going to bend it again and again and you're going to create this sort of T shape. All right. And this is going to be what's going to help support the little pieces. Oh, I see. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold it for me there. Yeah. And then you're going to place it underneath. Yeah. And then you're going to take a bit of glue and you're going to stick it in the seam of it. Mm -hmm. And to make your life go a little bit faster and this project work a little faster, you're going to take a paper clip. And hold it together. And hold it together and it's going to help hold it straight. Got it. And then you're going to glue them all together and I'm going to just take this down. Yeah. And so I've had some paper clips holding it together and you're going to just pull them out after they've um, dried. 
Mm -hmm. And I forgot which way that went in. But um, <laughs> then what you're gonna take is you're gonna take some squares, you're gonna cut them out of the same aluminum flashing. Right. And I actually hammered some of them to give it a bit more texture. And yes, variation. which I love that. So some of them you're going to leave smooth, some of them you're going to ham hammer so they have that that look. That exactly. Patina. And then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to actually glue these pieces. You can just take a pair of pliers and cut that off. You're yeah. going to glue the pieces on top. And what you're going to do is you're going to use these sort of suspended T things at different heights, and that way you're going to get this sort of nesting ah, effect. That's how you get it. So you layer them. And layer you them put exactly. Them where you feel like it leaves some open space. Exactly, and that way it adds to its airiness. Very nice. I love it. Okay, so as I mentioned, CityLine.ca for all of these instructions. Great projects, Thank you. as per usual.